Inside zone is one of the most widely used concepts in all of football. It's very simple to install, but requires a good amount of practice to get good at. And as it's so widely used, there are a ton of different ways in which you can coach this up. So strap in, we've got a long one today diving into all these details. And feel free to jump through and skip around through all these chapters if there's anything that needs a second viewing. First, let's take a look at what this scheme attacks. The reason this concept is so widely used is because it has a lot of solutions to a ton of different problems. And that's because it uses the defense's leverage against them. All right, so as you look at this diagram, you can see what we're really trying to attack here is gonna be this play side B gap working back all the way to the backside C gap. This is really where we're trying to put the ball for this scheme. The running back is gonna be aiming play side, but the aiming point is a little bit different for each team. All right, so at the snap, when we work across, it doesn't really matter what your aiming point could be. It's either gonna be the play side leg of the guard, backside leg of the guard, or maybe even play side leg of the center. This is all depending on how you wanna operate. But once we get this press here, what we're gonna do is we're looking play side and we're gonna look at the first down lineman past the center. That's gonna be this guy right here. All right, we know he's a three tech, so we're most likely gonna be cutting back behind him. We're not gonna be bouncing it outside. And then we look to our next defensive player on the first level, which is gonna be this backside one tech here. So as this thing starts to play out, we know immediately we're gonna cut back behind this defensive player here. And then we get a good look right here. We can see this play side shoulder here, play side arm, or even some jersey. If we can see this, we know we're gonna cut right back behind it. So this really is a true read working play side all the way to backside, right? One, two, three. Now this play is designed to get us only a few yards at a time, really four yards is what we're looking for, but it does have really big potential if everything gets blocked well and the running back makes the right cut. Now the read for the running back here is gonna be really quick. So essentially he's gotta make his decision within a matter of a split second here. So once he gets his hand off, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens here. We immediately know that we're gonna be making this cut and he doesn't have any time. This guy's end up crashing down in front of him. He's gotta make his decision instantly, press vertical. He ends up jumping and trying to get as much as he possibly can in this situation. But if there's any hesitation, we're not really gonna get any yards here. Now here's another situation with the same thing here. Now we're pressing this gap. Now we have to make a decision right now whether we're gonna stay on course or make the cutback. And he decides to make this cutback right here and then has to have a quick reaction to stutter and then continue play side. This is a very, very fast decision. Let's take a look at this in full speed here. Now, one of the phrases that we use to teach the running backs when we're talking inside zone is slow to fast through, which means that as we're pressing that gap, we don't wanna be full speed. We need to let things develop. But once we have a decision, we need to turn that on and burst through the hole. All right, so now we know a little bit about how we're trying to accomplish this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the actual blocking scheme so we know the rules. Because once you know the rules, then you can really understand the play and apply this in a ton of different scenarios. Now I wanna talk you through two different ways that you can run the inside zone. Covered, uncovered rules, and then also a number system. Both of these are gonna be effective and you can really accomplish the same things with these two different systems. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is gonna be covered versus uncovered. So how do you define covered? This is gonna be a major part of this. How are we actually defining this? Well, the way that I like to look at this is I wanna go from, instead of my nose, I wanna go my play side shoulder to the nose of the man next to me. So in this case, if we're running to the left, right? Let's say we're running here. We're gonna take a look at this offensive tackle here, play side tackle, because we're running left here. From his play side shoulder to the imaginary player next to him, right? That's where it would be. He's got somebody there, right? He's at, so somebody's in that gap, so we're gonna be covered. We take a look at this guard from his play side shoulder to the nose of the man next to him. There's no one here. Right, so he's gonna be uncovered. Now we look at it here, covered, apply the same rules, right? Uncovered, because this guy is shaded backside or maybe even head up, but either way, that's still gonna be uncovered. And then here we're covered. So we're covered, covered, and covered, and our two guards are gonna be uncovered in this situation here. Now with that information, let's go ahead and take a look at what the blocking scheme will actually look like, because what do you do with that information? Well, the first thing here is if you're covered, you're gonna be zone stepping and taking the man who is play side. 
Now this is where, with the uncovered guys, this is where teams can really adjust what they wanna do, and this can produce wildly different results. If you are uncovered, you can either help play side and then climb up to second level, or you can help backside and climb up to second level. If we help play side, we get a lot of lateral movement, a lot of lateral flow here. But if we help backside, we can get a lot more vertical push on this first level defender. So these are two different ways. Now they're not completely exclusive. You can do exactly what you see in this situation here. So what you can have is a play side tackle, steps takes this defensive end, and we end up climbing up. Center is gonna have a one-on-one -on -one block with this nose. So if that's a good matchup, we can take that. If not, we can of course have the, the guard help backside and then climb up to the wheel. And then here we get a lot of lateral push or a lot of vertical push, climb it up to this mic. And then of course, because we're in a 10 personnel look, we are gonna leave this defensive end unblocked. So now when we're here, we have the same read for the running back, right? He's gonna start with the first man past the center. So that's gonna be this nose. That'll be his first read. Then he's gonna work backside. So that would be the second read and that would be the third read. Okay, so for this situation here, we're gonna take a look if this, if this nose crashes play side, we cut it back, right? And then we should be able to cover up this three tech and then we're pressing this gap right in here. Okay, if we end up getting a lot of push with this three tech, then maybe we even cut back behind it and take this, really depends on how that defensive end handles it. Now, in this exact same situation here, how do you handle this defensive end? What are you really doing? You have to read him, okay? Because this is a 10 personnel look, you gotta read him. So if he goes upfield, we give the ball. If he crashes or spills, then the quarterback is gonna keep it, and then now it's an option football type of thing with that. So this was only one version of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple different fronts so we can kind of walk through this process together. All right, so here what we have is gonna be, now we're running to the three tech. In the, in the last one, we were running to the one tech. So this is gonna change some things, right? Now, if we look at this, he's gonna be covered. He's gonna be covered. The center is now gonna be uncovered. Backside guard, covered. And backside tackle is gonna be, oop, that should be a U, uncovered right here. Okay, so what do we know? Covered, you step play side, you step play side. Now this is important here because what happens if this defensive end slants in here? Okay, now there's different ways that you can handle this. You can just say that you are responsible for your man. So in this case with a three tech, your play side tackle could step with his inside foot to protect his B gap. This would be the B gap right here, right? This is the A gap, this is the minus A, out here is a C gap. So he can step with his inside foot to protect this B gap in case he slants in, or you could have it as if he steps play side always, he steps play side always. If this guy slants in, he's gotta now take that. Now you can use this solution if the uncovered defenders, uncovered blockers, sorry, are stepping play side, right? That's the idea. If he is gonna be helping with the backside, let's say we get this situation here, doubling up to the mic here and here. All right, now he's gonna step up and he's gonna end up looking for this Will who is technically a B-gap uh, run fit right here. And we read this defensive end. It's another way that you can handle this, right? But if this is the, if, that, if that's the exact situation and he slants to this A-gap and he slants to this B and then the, we get a blitz off the edge, now we're screwed, right? We're not gonna be able to pick this up because these two are both gonna lose their battles and then we have somebody off the edge. So this is a bad situation. So how do we handle this? Well, you handle this by saying that you just, everybody steps play side, all right? And then you take what shows up. That's one solution to that problem. And then it would essentially end up working up uh, if we got that exact look, he would take this, he would take this, he would take this, and then we have a double team up to the mic. We wouldn't be able to block the will, we wouldn't be able to block the defensive end, but that's sometimes how it goes. And now let's also talk about this backside tackle to see how we handle this particular problem. So if you count the numbers, right, we've got a, we got five offensive linemen and we have, in this situation here, we've got seven. But depends on if we're gonna count this guy and if we're gonna count this guy in our blocking scheme. Because if we don't, then we only have five, right? So now we have five for five. So one method of solving this problem is you could say, okay, we're covered here, we take this guy, we're covered here, we take this guy. Even if they slant in, we still take them. And then the running back would end up bouncing. Now we're gonna help backside with our uncovered blocker. All right, help backside, climb it up to this mic. And then what you can say is 
If the will is in the B gap, he steps in and climbs to second level. Or if the will is outside of the defensive end, then he could step inside and react and then take this defensive end and leave the will unblocked. And that way, even if we have a situation where maybe we need to cut this back, right, we're still not in a dangerous position because he's outside the box. He will come in and make the tackle unless we can pick him up with the H or unless we use an RPO or something like that. But if he does that, it's going to be at least three yards down the field, two to three yards. We'll fall forward and we'll get the four yards that we're really looking for with this play anyways. All right, so we've looked at this from 10 personnel running to an over to an under front, but we haven't really looked at this from a three-man front and what you do with a tight end. So let's go ahead and cover those two topics right now. All right, here we go. So we got our three-man front here. Now, how do we handle this, right? We're going to run to the right. So let's go ahead and talk about the covered, uncovered rules again. Play side tackle. Does he have somebody from his play side shoulder to the nose of the man next to him? No, he does not. He is uncovered. Guard, he does have somebody. This defensive end playing a four eye. He's right in here. Nose, this guy's head up, right? If he's head up, he's not covered. So he's going to be uncovered, right? Because it's play side shoulder to the nose of the man next to you. Somebody in this area right here. Okay, when he says play side shoulder to his nose of the man, there is somebody there because this guy's head up. So he's going to be covered, all right? In this case, he's a four eye. So we're going to count this guy as covered as well. And then the Y has different rules. He's going to kick out the backside C gap defender, right? Not the defensive end, but the backside C gap defender. It's a very important distinction that we have to have with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would block this. So what we want to do to make sure that we protect this area here is have this be a double team out to this Sam out here, right? Our double team here is going to be helping to the mic. We're going to step in and we're going to handle this. If he goes outside, we climb to second level and the Y will take the new C gap defender. If the defensive end crashes, he is a B gap defender. The guard will take him and the Y is going to take whoever's most dangerous, most likely this Jack or it could be this will. But either way, we're gonna have one of these guys unblocked, right? One of these two is gonna be unblocked and that's gonna be fine because we'll still get some yards with this play and that's what we're looking for. Now, how does this work from a running back's perspective? If we know that we're gonna double team up here, we most likely will be able to make this cut back here. That's what we're looking to take. So pre-snap, we know that that's already gonna be there when we do this. We just have to figure out if we're gonna be pressing this right here or if we end up washing this defensive end and we end up cutting back behind this. Now, the other thing that you can tell your why is to take the most dangerous inside guy. That's another solution for this. So maybe this Jack steps up, but this Will also steps up in here and we end up taking this, right? So we end up with this. If he slants in, he's gonna take this. All right, we're, we're good with our double team here. We're good with our double team here. We end up cutting right in here. Jack stays outside and we're off for a big run. How do we handle the safety, right? The safeties are always gonna be a problem in any blocking scheme. Okay, this is a, a huge benefit for the defense. I like to say, let's go ahead and just take our receivers and let's block outside backers and let's block safeties. Let's assume that these two corners don't wanna tackle. It's not really their, their favorite thing to do in the world. So we're gonna assume that we don't have to block them. Right, and then let's let's make them prove to us that they are tacklers. That's my philosophy uh, when it comes to this. And a lot of coaches use this. You'll see guys leave corners unblocked a lot and go and block safeties. Okay, it's a really good solution. Now, guys, do me a favor. Pause the video. Go through these different fronts: over, under, three, 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 four. Go through a ton of different fronts. Apply these rules and then see how it would block, okay? See how you'd end up blocking this play. This is the best way to learn, right? Watching a video is one thing, but actually going through and taking the time and drawing stuff up on paper, that's the best way for you to actually get this information. And the next thing I wanna look at is gonna be that backside C-gap defender. There are two different ways we can handle this. We can either block them or we can read them. We've talked about how we can block them. Let's talk about how we can read them even when we're in 11 personnel, we have a tight end or fullback, however you wanna call that. All right, so here's the situation. We've got an over front here. We're gonna be running inside zone to the left. Okay, so when we have this, how do we handle this problem, right? If we look at the defense, he's got A gap, C gap. He'll be taking B, he's A, B, he's C. And then how do we have a D gap defender? Well, you end up taking the safety and rolling him down. We roll him to the field, problem solved. We got every single gap covered uh, from a defense's perspective. But let's go ahead and take a look at the inside zone here. We're running to the left here, so. What we're gonna have is 
Let's go covered, covered, uncovered, covered, uncovered, right? So this is gonna be our blocking scheme. Let's say we're gonna help backside. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Coaches do this in a ton of different ways. There's not really a right or wrong answer with this. We're gonna step in here. We climb up and take this mic. Now he could work across and kick this guy out, right? That's a, that's a traditional split zone that a lot of coaches use. Or the other thing you can do is have him loop around, right? And he's gonna take the most dangerous man inside. You can say MDM, most dangerous man. That's one way to put it. So what we end up doing is we read this guy. And we're gonna be reading this defensive end. When he steps in, does he squeeze? Because if he squeezes, the quarterback can pull. He loops around and then off we go. We just have to have these guys blocking right here and here. We leave the corner unblocked. He's gotta go get this safety and this corner's unblocked. Now, technically, if we give the ball, we have a offensive tackle who's gonna be taking this leverage. And if the quarterback keeps it, we have a blocker who's taking that leverage. So we should have this, pick, this guy picked up either way and then off we go. Now let's jump into the film so we can see what this actually looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this front here. So if we say we're running to the left here, inside zone to left, running backs on the right, we got covered here, uncovered, covered, uncovered, and we have covered. So let's say we're gonna help, when we're uncovered, we're gonna help our backside teammates. So he's gonna end up taking this. We're gonna get a double team here, climb it up. We're gonna get a double team on this three tech who's really playing defensive end here and then we're climbing up to 54 and now what do we do with this well we can either read him or kick him out now he's so far outside most likely we're just going to kick this guy out and then off we go running the ball so let's go ahead and take a look at what this actually plays out like all right so here we go we get the snap we have our 79 here is taking a step inside to protect his inside gap to make sure this defensive end, even if he crashes in, 79 can still take him, right? If 72 was gonna be helping play side, which maybe he is because his head is looking to the left, but that problem will be solved either way, even if 72 helps backside and then climbs up. Right now, they essentially have three for three, all right, with this guy's eyes being able to check this play side gap in case any problems occur. Now, they have this weird little sandwich that they got going on here. But on the back side of this run, we have a very important block here, all right? We're attacking vertical with 54, all right? We're gonna be able to hit and lift, and then we're gonna get off to 54 here, our, our linebacker 54. We can see from a running back's perspective, we're getting jersey here. So we could cut this back, right? That's what the read could tell us. And then 60, or this right tackle would have to come up and take this backer here uh, if he has the ability to, which he does. Right, notice he checks play side, he gets his hand on, and then he's gonna turn outside and be ready to take this backer when he shows up. But the running back decides to bounce this play side. This doesn't happen too often in football with running backs bouncing play side on inside zone, but it ends up working out fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at this from a wide view here. So they motion over, we got this right here. Now this is where the cutback could technically be right in here, right? And then these guys, they're outside releasing here. They also could go in here and block safeties. Again, there is no right or wrong answer to any of these problems. It's just different ways in which you can do it. And as you can see right now, they had a second and two. They got their first down. That's the goal that they wanted, right? That's the outcome they're looking for with this play here. So you very well could implement covered, uncovered rules into your blocking scheme and have a ton of success. A lot of teams do it this way, but let's go over one other version, which is a number system that you can also implement and you'll really get a lot of the same looks. It's just a different way of approaching the same problem. All right, so back to the drawing board here. Let's say we're gonna be running this inside zone to the left. So what we can do without the covered uncovered rules, what we can do is just start with a counting system. Let's go play side work into backside. So this would be one, two, three, four, and five, right? And if you do that, then we're gonna be blocking these guys in this way, right? So it, en it ends up being the exact same way that you, you can do that. Now, what you can do with a counting system that's a little bit different and, and kind of cool is that you have the ability to say, okay, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and leave this play side first level defender or second level defender unblocked. Let's skip him in the count. Now, what will that look like? So that's one, two. Here's our first second level defender. Let's skip him three, four, five. Now, this is a very, very different play. If you actually look at what this is, this is ISO, right? 
Normally people don't run ISO to a three tech, you run it to, to the bubble here. Uh, but this is one way of running a very, very different play. You can tag the exact same play, right? Inside zone, but you just have, you have a tag word, right? So whatever you call inside zone, you just add a tag word and it says, leave the second level defender. So then you end up with this. What happens if we wanna leave the backside second level defender? So now we're here, one, two, three, four, skip, five. So now we get this look here, all right? And this is an insert zone with him coming back across and taking this guy. Now we have the very similar situation as inside zone, but because we're not stepping in here and having him crash, we might get a lot of width, especially if this guy pass sets. If you know that you're gonna get this guy, if you, if you pass set and he goes outside, you can create a very, very large gap between this nose and this defensive end. If you get a lot of lateral push here and you move him another gap, now you've got this big of a lane, right? He makes the block or even if he whiffs, we still have a path that we can take off. So this is a really cool way by using a number system to accomplish a problem that you wouldn't be able to unless you have a specific tag word or a different concept that goes along with it. All right, so I wanna take a look at one additional thing that we can add to our blocking scheme here. It's not really related to it, but it just has a huge effect on it. It's gonna be a jet sweep action. Now you can tag this to any of your inside zones and it'll have a really nice effect. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this actually is. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this jet sweep action really works. So a jet sweep is gonna be at the you know pre-snap, we want to send this guy in motion. Now I'm drawing it slowly, but this is full speed, okay? A maximum sprint. And then we snap it when he's just inside this tackle. We get a nice little flash fake, and then he's gonna continue and run the bubble. So we have the ability to read a defensive end, especially in 10 personnel. If we want to do this, we can always take and fire that bubble. Now we're gonna see how the defense adjusts. And this is also another note to this, is that let's say we're running to the right here. When we go by covered, uncovered rules here, okay? So this is what we're gonna have. Now this is important when you're running a jet sweep action, you wanna make sure that your uncovered guys are helping play side, right? Why is that important? Because what happens when this guy motions in, he doesn't have to be apex anymore. He's not gonna split the difference. He's probably gonna tighten up. So now this box is going to change. So what you might have is a double team up to the Sam, right? You might end up with this double team to the Mike who has to bump over now. Right, and then the will is either, he's either gonna stay here and then we just we just fake it, right? We fake this, fire the bubble, and now we have two guys picked up, right? And the will stays in the box or he widens out a ton, all right? And then we have a really nice cutback lane if we end up giving. So if the defensive end goes upfield, we have a really good cutback lane. If he crashes in and we pull and keep it, we still have a good lane here, okay? So this is a nice little wrinkle, uh, and it's very important that you tell your uncovered blockers in this situation, whenever you have a jet sweep coming in, they have to help play side, because let's go ahead and look at what could happen if you don't do that, right? So we, we send this motion in full speed, okay? He tightens up into the box. We stay with our covered, uncovered rules. We end up getting here. We climb, we take this will, and now we have a Sam at the point of attack who's not really blocked, he's not picked up. Okay, so this is something that we, we don't wanna have. We need to make sure we have solutions to all the problems uh, that, we, that we anticipate. All right, so we've got the ground game pretty much covered right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at some RPOs because that's the next thing. Spread offensive guys absolutely love this stuff. There's a lot of benefits that can be had from RPOs. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. All right, now we've got two RPOs we're gonna go through. This is a stick variation, kind of a stick, kind of a glance, difficult to tell. We'll see the film so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But either way, you end up with a triangle read here, right? And what we're gonna have, this, this is a inside zone where these guys, while they're covered here, they might even have an additional call that says, hey, we have plus one off the edge which means that they end up running a push zone or what they're trying to do is really drive these guys to make sure they go outside. So it's essentially guaranteeing a cutback with this, right? And on the backside here, they're gonna get this double team, climb it up to whoever this backer is, the most dangerous guy in the box. All right, so what we end up having here is a read on this defensive end. And now they must have seen on film that this guy is gonna turn and run anytime the tackle turns and sprints here, he's going to chase. And then they put this defender in a bind, whether he's going to back up, right, and take this 
glance type of route or stick or curl, however you want to call this. And then you have a flat coming out in here. Now, why do we have this jet motion or whatever you want to call this here? It's just to get the corner to sprint out of here. So we want this will to be the guy who's in a bind and we have the ability to break this to make sure that we don't run into the safety. Let's go ahead and take a look at the film so we can see what this looks like. All right, so here's our fly motion or however you want to call that. We've got Tyreek Hill as our guy who's sprinting across and getting into the flats. You think that that might be a threat for sure it is. We take a look at this defensive end once he sees the tackle step in, he's definitely working in. All right, we've got this pull, and now we've got our glance. This is the will that's gonna be in the bind of whether he's gonna be here or here, right? Those are the two options for him. And then we have a really easy shot downfield. So let's go ahead and take a look at this a few times here from full speed so we can see everything in action. Look how quickly we're gonna get rid of the ball from the quarterback's perspective. He's not even moving his feet after this pull. He's gonna immediately stay in his base and be able to fire and pull. Our slot receiver is not in a race to get to the safety, all right? Notice that he comes off and he's already looking. Right as he passes this backer, he starts looking eyes in the backfield and he's jogging. He doesn't wanna get here. Now when he wants to catch the ball in space and make a play, that's the idea. And here's our next one. This is gonna be a split zone version or a insert zone. Imagine we had our fullback or our Y in here and we did our counting system, one, two, three, four, and we skipped him and went to five and we insert him, but we just take him and we move him out here. So now we're not blocking this guy at all. We're only reading him. So if he ends up crashing, that's a guarantee that we just pull and throw this. Now the defense does a really good job of having somebody commit they want to show this is this is a really good job kind of adding this this here it's wide open here it is here it is and they try and take it away really quickly right so this is a good job by the defense but it's still a nice completion for the offense and i want you to notice that these guys are just manned up on the backside so this is a true read if he doesn't blitz and he stays here all the quarterback is going to do is say does he stay here yes throw does he widen yes give right can he take this away yes or no that's really the question or you can approach it as can he make the tackle yes or no okay but i really like the thought of saying can he deflect this because he should be able to even if he's wider right he should be able to fall into the box and make the tackle two to three yards downfield anyways uh, because these guys are crazy athletes but let's go ahead and look at the film so we can see what i'm talking about here all right, so here's that three by one look, and this is the backer that we're really trying to trying to target here, okay? So we're gonna be manned up, manned up. Now we've got inside zone to this side here. He's gonna take this, okay? You can do whatever you want on the backside here. Go get block the safety, it doesn't really matter. And then here we've got a true stick concept, right? We could do this, we can do this, or what they have is a little bit of a slot fade version. So if they get a one high safety look and they really like that, they have the ability to throw that slot fade if it's there. So let's look at how this plays out. This guy, okay, he's gonna see this blitz come in here. So that's gonna be a dead giveaway immediately. He doesn't even need to fire. Uh, he doesn't need to go through his full fake. He can just quickly fire this. And Jamar Chase does a good job finding space, settling it up, and making a catch in traffic because he's getting contacted. As soon as he touches the ball, he's getting contacted. Right, but that's a nice four or five yard gain. We'll take that every single time if it's there. Great job designing this play. We have the corner squatting here. Safety's working over for this slot fade and the Sam who was out here tightens up to take this away. So it's a really, really good job by the defense, but it's still just a good you know, overall play by, by the offense as well. We end up getting a couple of yards. All right, guys, and that about wraps this whole thing up. If you are still here to the very end, I'm assuming you're just a huge football nerd who just absolutely loves this stuff, kind of like me a little bit. And for those of you guys, I have a really cool offer. I have a 90-day OC course that is, you know, probably the most in-depth thing I've ever done in my life. It takes you through every single aspect that you would need, every factor that you need to become an offensive coordinator. A lot of details go into it. Uh, every single concept that I can think of, there is a video like this in there. You break down every single concept in a lot of detail. You get to learn a ton, but it's not just the concept design. It's also about game planning, the processes, the player development systems, 
practice design, a ton of things, any really anything that you can really think of that you would need to be an offensive coordinator, a lot's in there, okay? So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. There's gonna be a link in the description below for that. Uh, so hopefully that is something that you're really into. And uh, if so, then I'll see you guys in the course. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.